In today's tutorial, I will show you how to knit a shrug with a toy knitting machine. I will show you how to cast on, cast off, and knit simple tuck stitches. On the knitting bed, there are these pins, which can be moved to four positions. On the top is the resting pin place, where we leave the non-working pins. The second position is the regular knitting stitch. And the last two is for casting on and making patterns. This is the carriage. There are tracks underneath to guide the pins. On the carriage, there are two release buttons for emergency when the yarn gets stuck. So let me put on the tension rod. I will use this knitting cone. It is the one pin down, three pins up one, and also these weights to pull down the knitted piece. This toy knitting machine has 30 pins. It will make a piece about seven and a half inches, about 20 centimeters wide. In order to make a shrug, we will have to knit two identical pieces and then stitch them together in the middle. The first couple rows will look like seaweed. So to make it easier to work with, we will need a few rows with waist yarn. This will be discarded by pulling out this ravel yarn. The ravel yarn will also help us see the individual stitches so that we can weave in the ends. The plan is to knit about 10 rows with waist yarn, add one row with the ravel yarn, and with the main yarn, we will do five rows of regular knitting stitches. And after that, we'll begin our four row repeat pattern. I did 78 sets of this repeat pattern and ended with five rows of regular stitches. After we have sewn the two pieces together, we will crochet a front pose, back pose, ripping stitch on the short ends and then add a buttonhole and some buttons. And on the long edge, I did a row of double crochet. We're going to cast on with the waist yarn. Find the yarn tail from the center of the yarn ball and pull out a good portion. As long as the yarn is dispensing without obstruction, the carriage won't get stuck. Also, when the yarn is coming out from the center, the yarn ball won't roll around all over the place. Now we wind it through the tension rod like this and go through the wire. Uh, since we're using waist yarn, we can move just the alternate pins to the cast on position, the fourth position. I'm skipping the first pin because it tends to fall off. The total pins I'll be using is 29. Place the yarn tail into this hole here and then go under over, under, over, until you reach the end. My yarn goes under the last pin, so I just wrap it around that last pin and add a cloth pin to weight it down. Move the pins up to the third position and swipe across. You see that the pins move up to the second position after the swipe. We will move the rest of the resting pins to the second position. Swipe across and check that the yarn is properly knitted and none has fallen off. I do want to point out that my knitting bed is not placed properly here. It is folding on the shelf. It should be flat on the edge of the table. I will show you the important steps and move back to my desk where it is dark and kind of messy to finish off the project. We will help the yarn stay in place by adding weights to both ends. I'm going to add the ravel cord. It should be in a different color. Remove the waist yarn from the carriage. We will weight down the ends of the ravel cord and then place it into the carriage hole. Hold on to the other end and swipe across. 
So I actually put it in my mouth in this step. Now we will thread in our main yarn and knit five rows in the regular knitting position. That's position two. We can now start our four row repeat pattern. Use the one three comb. I'm starting the pattern on the third pin. Remove them down to the fourth position. Swipe across. You see that the yarn is floating on the lowered pins. Swipe again. You see that the pins, the pins have moved up to the third position. And now there are two strands of yarn on the lowered pins. Swipe again. The pins will bounce back up to the second position. And then we will end the pattern with the fourth swipe in this second position. You see here these two yarn that has been floated. It will create a tuck which creates the pattern. I repeat this pattern a total of 78 sets. Remember to reposition the weights as the piece gets longer. After 78 sets, we will add five rows in the regular knitting position. Position two. To cast off, we will pull out two to three length of what we are knitting before we cut it off so we go in here come out and then the next one you go inside and come out here and we do the next one Go into the loop, come out through this loop, so I'm going in and coming out this loop here, okay. Now go number five, come up number four, take the next one out. So as you as you move inwards, it's easier if you just take some of those that you've already done out. So that is easier to grab onto. So I'm on the last one. Just going to go like this. Just secure it so it won't fall off as you're going. And take them all out. The purpose of the ravel cord is to help us see the stitches. So this one is not showing that well on camera. Let me show you the other one. We will cast off by treading through the stitches.
now to release the waist yarn we just pull on the ravel cord and the waist yarn will just fall off so you will get like a neater edge this way So now we have two pieces. This is the neck side and this is the pearl side. So I want to make it like reverse. See that there's a lot of curling. I'm going to add a round of single crochets around the piece. I'm going under the V's. You see how the difference is much neater than this. So this will be easier to join. So I match this part. You see the horizontal lines here? Yeah, I mash the lines and I start here instead of starting at the bottom. And I left a tail so I can go back and finish it. I'm on this side now. I'm on this side. close the ends so I have this threaded chain three turn and we will do front pose back pose double crochet so yarn over so put it so that the pose is on top yarn over we have three loops and you make a double crochet so now this part is going to pop up. The next one, you will do back pose, double crochet. So yarn over, just hold this. Go like this so that the so that the pose is behind you. And then do a double crochet. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit so you can see. Okay. Now we do a front pose, so we just alternate. Okay. Yarn over. Yarn over. This is the front pose. The back pose, yarn over, hold it, put your Crochet hook from behind. 
pull out a loop. You have three loops on your hook. And then continue making a double crochet. do three more double crochet but I'm gonna skip one to create a buttonhole create a buttonhole so I need to make a chain and then a double crochet and then another double crochet in here So I have a little hole here as a buttonhole. So if you want to, you can add several of these at intervals. I'm just going to add one. Okay, and this I'm just going to pull it out. And we will weave in these ends.